Welcome to a News Capital production where we tell you the story of people that own local restaurants. Today, we're taking a stroll through downtown McAllister here on Choctaw Avenue to visit a familiar building, but an entirely new restaurant. I'm Derek Hattridge, and this is Mmm, That's Tasty. I'm Andrew Hudson, 14 years old, open into ramen bar, it's traditional handmade Japanese ramen, make it fresh, I mean, everything's made in house. So we got told that you, uh, from a very young age, have been really into cooking. I've loved cooking. Um, when I was really young, my grandmother would sit me up on the counter and I'd make gravy and just random breakfast foods when I was like three mm -hmm. on the counter because I couldn't reach a skillet from the floor. I mean, hey. Nice start though. Yeah. <laughs> so what, what is it about cooking that you like so much? It's really fun to feed people, like make something and just watch people enjoy it. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of fun. And then it's just fun experimenting with new things. Yeah. What made you want to uh, do ramen? We ate at a ramen bar in Dallas. I really liked it because it's way different than anything else ramen wise. Like you can't get anything out of a pack and expect it to be real um so we tried one down in dallas and i loved it and i got a tour of their kitchen uh the general manager there we got to talk to him and they i toured their kitchen it was, it's great i enjoyed it that's pretty cool awesome. so you said you like to experiment so i mean is that how you kind of come up with the menu how'd you come up with that menu um like it depends some of it's traditional like the miso or the tonkatsu is pretty traditional bowls but like the spicy garlic, that's just for me and dad playing around and doing different things with bowls, ramen, and seeing what we like. I'll tell you, I was reading the description on it earlier and I was like, that one sounds really good. <laughs> so, I like, well, I like spicy garlic anything, yeah. so I, I totally would. That'd be the one I would order. Um, it's probably our most popular bowl. Awesome, awesome. That was actually my next question, is what are the most popular dishes? Yeah, uh, the spicy garlic and, hmm. It's either that, the tonkatsu, or the miso after that. You can't go wrong with a good miso. So. No, you can't. <laughs> it's a traditional, and it's, you order miso one place, you order miso a different place, it can be so different though. Like, you have red miso, white miso, all the different types. Right. Yeah. What was it like getting all of this kind of started together? Um, it was fun. I've already been working in that kitchen for a while, so it wasn't too different. I mean, it was a whole different kind of cuisine and style of cooking it and getting it ready to order, but I've always been used to serving customers and taking care of people, so. Right. so it's just kind of, kind of the next step for yeah. you. What, was, what has been some of the reaction when people have come in and tried your food for the first time? Um, I feel like a lot of it, so, like a shock because they've all haven't really had real ramen it's all been the fake stuff and uh powders all that and not the traditional cook it for 12 hours ramen like it's a whole different thing right absolutely but i'm, I'm sure they leave with happy bellies too. oh yes <laughs> definitely full that's for sure absolutely yeah because you have huge portion sizes yeah it's 12 ounces of broth plus anywhere from two to three of added sauces and then about two or three of toppings. So when you're putting, um, when you're sitting there making it, I mean, are you making your own sauces? What? Um, I make my sauces and steep them, like, and all that. And then I keep them in a the fridge so they can marinate and infuse all the flavors and kind of combine. But the stocks are like traditional bone stocks. You add your bones, your water, all that. You boil it for 12 hours. Or more it depends on what stock you're making so it's a lot longer process than people realize yes you can't make a bowl of ramen in one day it just doesn't happen not if you're doing it right yeah no <laughs> unless you want to put it a 16 hour day in and then I mean, sometimes i have to but not necessarily <laughs> not a fun to. time <laughs> no no so um have you ever had any any sauce that's kind of your own creation or is it more of just kind of what you've seen and learned um all of them have a traditional-ish orientation. Like, 
it's not exactly traditional. We have a twist on all of them. They're not exactly, this is how you make it and this is how we do it. All of ours are a little bit different. I got you. Kind of just the localized version. Of yeah. The... I mean, ramen's kind of like Japanese version of barbecue here because you go to different places here, you have different kinds yeah. of barbecue. There's, but there, you go to different places, you have different kinds. You got your shio, your miso, your sh shoyu, all these different things. Just different places have their own twist. So, so I know you said you went to that restaurant and they kind of showed you around. Did you kind of dig more into into the, the culture and um, the dishes and yes. everything? Yes. Uh, after I saw that, I really liked it and thought it was very interesting. So I came home, I watched a lot of YouTube, a lot of things like that just different things to learn about it and eventually I found out it's not that difficult it just takes a really long time and a lot of effort and I thought I'd do something good to invest in I mean Nick Callister doesn't have anything like it that's no, for sure no absolutely it's a wonderful addition and like I so said you, you just the way you talk you really care about the, the, the quality of food you're making is it yes and I kind of said something about it already but do you enjoy seeing the joy your food brings to people I do. It might be my favorite part of it, being able to give people food and watching them enjoy it. Uh, it's like a lot of people are shocked when they try it because it's, it's just very different. Mm -hmm. well, and then what's it been like getting to uh, kind of take this culinary journey with family? It's been fun. I enjoy it. It's a great time. Let me ask you this because he can't defend himself right now. Who's the better cook? He still got me by a little <laughs> bit. Just a little bit. <laughs> Do you plan to overtake him? Oh, most definitely. <laughs> what personally is your favorite thing? Anything doesn't have to be something you make here. What's your favorite thing to cook yourself? I love cooking steaks. Steaks are a really fun one because I mean they're really pretty and they're so easy to mess up. Yeah. <laughs> you overcook it by five degrees, you totally ruin a steak. Yeah. How do you how do you cook your steak typically? Rare, or medium, rare. Out of boy. I mean, no. I really love tataki though. So like, just sear it off and it's like cold in the middle still. Oh, I, I can eat it that way. I like it See, that way. I haven't tried any like that, but I, I'd be willing to. Yeah. And so, you know, I know things are crazy. It's, we're, we're trying to get post COVID and everything else. What is the future like for you? What, you know, any new plans, any new things you want to add on the menu or? Uh, I feel like expanding the menu a little bit would be fun. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what yet or how, but expansion is definitely possible and probably in the future. Have you had anybody just question you on your age or anything or? Um, yes, actually that's one that happens quite often. Uh, there's a funny story about that. <laughs> one time someone almost called the police <laughs> because they thought my dad was forcing me to work unwillingly. <laughs> Yeah, he's standing up there. He's like, "So your dad makes you work?" I'm like, "No, I, I really enjoy it. This is my like, my favorite thing to do." He's like, "Do I need to call the police?" I'm like, "No, sir." He's like, "What's your parents' names?" <laughs> um, and so, what would you say to people that are still haven't discovered your your place yet and are unsure about letting the child labor cook them, <laughs> cook them the food? What would you say to get people in the door? I guess that have haven't tried it yet. That there's nothing like it. It's a whole new experience and something that you're not going to find anywhere else. And it's something definitely worth trying at least once. I like that you phrase it as an experience. It's not just coming to eat. It's no, experience. it is an experience. It's the whole thing. It's, all right, you sit up at the bar, I'll talk to you, we'll, we'll explain everything. It's an experience. It's not just, here's your food, go sit down. It's, it, you can have a conversation. I mean, it's very fun. <laughs> Mm. Oh man, that was delicious. Well, that's going to do it for us here at the Red Ramen Bar here in McAllister. And sadly, that means this is also our season finale for season one of Mmm, That's Tasty. But thank you so much for tuning in this season and stay tuned because season two will be on the way. Also, make sure that you're always checking out McAllisterNews.com for the latest in news in Southeast Oklahoma. Until then, I'm Derek Hattridge and this has been Mmm. That's tasty.